Hello everyone. My name is Wasim Khan. I work at Nows Infosystem as the head of marketing. I welcome you all to the Uber UI framework webinar. Our speaker for the day is Mr. Ignatius Andrew, who runs the UI UX practice at Nows. Ignatius has five plus years of experience working in Nows and has 15 years of experience in architecting large scale JavaScript applications and hybrid mobile applications. Before we begin, I would like to quickly introduce you to Nows Infosystem. Nows has close to 21 plus years of experience in the IT industry and has 1000 plus skilled workforce both onshore and offshore. With respect to our business units, we have three such units that is Global Software Services, Testry and VServe. I would also like to go ahead and communicate to you as to how we will be taking this webinar forward. If you have any questions during the course of the webinar, please type in your questions into the question panel of the GoToWebinar. All questions will be answered in the end of the webinar. Audience will be kept on mute during the course of the webinar. And in a few days time, this webinar will be shared with all the attendees. I would like Ignatius to take for, forward from here and walk you through the agenda and the presentation. Thank you. Hi everyone, this is Ignatius. Thank you Vasim for the introduction. We can directly dive inside the presentation. I want to introduce about the agenda of this presentation. So we have four agendas today. The first one is what happening on the UI front? Why are there many frameworks on JavaScript? This is a very relevant question today. And the third section is what we actually offer. On the final one, we'll directly take you to the demo. So entering into the first section, what's really happening on the UI front? There are three critical questions surrounding this environment. The first one is, is your application a year old? then most probably your tech stack is outdated. The second one is technology will continuously evolve. Will your application too? This is a very important question. The third one here is, can you upgrade your UI application on production? This is something unheard of, right? So let us first of all see why there are so much of noise on JavaScript. A couple of years back, and JavaScript was considered as a scripting language when it was introduced and people were not taking it seriously. But today, JavaScript is everywhere. And that brings us to this question. Is JavaScript the future? And these statistics will clearly show you that why we consider JavaScript as the futuristic language. And Google went on ahead and said that JavaScript will be the enterprise language. So you can clearly see on the statistics, JavaScript has 62.5% of queries, which is queried on the internet today. You can see a lot of legendary languages like C Sharp, Java, C++, C, and some popular languages like Python and PHP, they are way behind JavaScript. So this is a clear indication in which the direction the industry is taking. And this brings us to the next question. Why there are so many frameworks on JavaScript? From my left to right, you can clearly see here it's Angular, we have React, we have Aurela, Vue.js, and Backbone. So there are multiple frameworks, and I've shown only five on the screen. And there are a number of frameworks, and there are a huge number of frameworks which are planned to be released on the future as well. Why there are so many frameworks on JavaScript? 
and we have to answer the following question to understand this. Do you think really technology has evolved? The answer is yes and no. Yes for the tech giants and no for the and no for the web platform. We have to understand first of all that your applications are created to cater the browser. Your browser can understand only HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Apart from these, th these three things, it cannot understand anything else. So, answering the question, does technology has really evolved? So let us talk about these three basic pillars and what are the flaws today. You cannot import a HTML template in another HTML template. Something like import graph.html. Have you seen index.html files and other HTML files are growing and growing these days? So this is the first feature that has to be implemented when you create a HTML application. Right? As we speak today, you cannot import a HTML inside a HTML. And coming to CSS, CSS is still not a language. It is a descriptive syntax. People may argue that we have SAS and less today. But let us talk about the core. CSS is not a language as we speak today. And we have to agree to that. An advanced version of JavaScript, ES6, is still not natively understood by the browser. We have to use transpilers to transpile that into ES5. That is understood by the browser. So with these three building blocks of web, having so much of issues within them, right? There are so much of things which is unsolved in these three technologies. How can you say that web has evolved? This is a very serious question. The problem with today's scenario is the abstractions have evolved, but the basic has not evolved. Right? And that's the reason you see a lot of frameworks on top of JavaScript. Another important stuff that we have to understand here is JavaScript is a premature language as we speak now. It's a debatable question and people may argue that we have ES7, we have ES8. But are we really writing ES7, ES8 codes today? Even if you write ES8, code, ES8 recommended, recommended codes, do you really have browsers to understand it? But we are fighting a problem today. JavaScript is everywhere and JavaScript is future. If I'm creating an application today, I have to really consider JavaScript as my primary language. Now, JavaScript is everywhere. It is an IoT, server-side covered with Node.js, hybrid applications, full-stack applications. So JavaScript is everywhere. But JavaScript as a language is not ready. So how will you plan for your application today? I need to use JavaScript, but JavaScript as a language is not ready. So what is my solution today? And that is where your polyfill comes in. I'm considering your frameworks like React and Angular, everything as a polyfill to polyfill the core language. Since the native language JavaScript doesn't have these free features and that's the reason we require all these frameworks. And coming back to frameworks, frameworks are abstractions. This is a very important point that we have to understand. Frameworks are abstractions on top of these core languages. I always start a section with a question, with a very relevant question. So what is the most important factor in project planning? The answer to that is, will your application be up to date with technology after a year? And how many people have really asked this question when we are planning for a project? And this might be shocker for y'all. UI frameworks and libraries are scheduled to be outdated. Frameworks and libraries come with an expiry date. When somebody says that I've released a framework on this particular date, then he's hiding the expiry date. And that is what which is happening in the industry today. And as we talk today, most of us would consider Vue and uh, React as the primary frameworks that we are building our application on top of. But coming in the last six months, or in the next one year, definitely these technologies will be outdated. And what will be the fate of your applications? Now let me reiterate that 
your browser only understands HTML, CSS and JavaScript. It's time for us to come back to the basics. We have evolved far away from the basics. When web started, we created our applications using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And now we have moved far away from the basic course and we always develop applications on top of abstractions, which is Angular, React, Vue.js and whatnot. As it has been proven time and again that abstractions are temporary solutions. It's time for us to go back to the basics and strengthen our core. And that is what this picture represents. At Nows, we have understood it and we have taken this issue very seriously. Especially, we don't want our client who, who has engaged with us a couple of years back and we have created an application worth millions of dollars and that application has been outdated in a year or in six months. So, that, so this is very unfair. To solve that problem, we have come up with a framework which is called as Uber UI framework. We assure three guarantees to our clients. The first one is a technology decoupled framework, longevity and stability under a volatile front end environment, migration between frameworks is simplified. These are the three core issues which is threatening the UI development today. So we have found a solution for all these things. If I want to explain this concept technically, and this diagram would do that. As I said, technology is a supplementary to a product. You should not tie up your technology and your business logics. And that's the reason we have kept technology where you see this angular layer completely independent of the application. The right side of the picture, what you see on the green blocks are the business logics which you have written in pure JavaScript. So if your business logic requires a HTTP call or a caching mechanism or a lazy loading mechanism, so that can interface with the thin Uber UI layer, what we are created. It is very, very lightweight. So in turns, our Uber UI layer will contact the framework and it will get that service from that framework and it will help the application. So this is how this has been architected. So tomorrow, Angular has been outdated. If I want to move to React, I'm replacing only this 20% of my application. Right? I'm not tying framework with my business logics or framework with my application. Here, I want to stress a point clearly that we are not against any frameworks. Framework is a wonderful thing. Angular has one of the most fastest bootstrapping engine. We want to make use of it. At the same time, you have to make a clear decision how you are going to engage with the framework. Are you going to couple your logics with the frameworks? Definitely not. Right? So this is the basic approach which is the core behind the Uber UI framework. And this slide would explain that why we have taken that decision. On the left hand side of the screen, the image that you see is the React code. On the right hand side, this is, it is the Angular code. If you see the React code, your HTML, CSS and JavaScript are tightly coupled among each other. Right? And this is called as JSX. I don't know where that name came from. On the right hand side, you see Angular. There's absolutely no relationship between React and Angular. If I've developed an application using React, definitely I cannot migrate that application to Angular. I have to rewrite the complete application. On the other side, what Uber UI architecture demands is, on the left hand side, you have, Angular, you have React application. On the right hand side, it is Angular application. If you see, the HTML is pure HTML. The JavaScript is pure JavaScript. For example, we have tried to implement an audio component here. So that audio component is interfaced by zero. Zero is the name of the module that we have given for the Uber UI architecture. So if you call zero.play audio, you just pass the audio. 
you pass the id of the audio and the default audio so this in turn will play the audio for you on the screen right if i go back to the screen i'm not messing up with my html css and javascript and this is very clear so the application that has been created in react you have to just copy paste and copy and paste it in a newer technology which is going to evolve tomorrow so in this in this way we promise that we would save 80% of your cost and time when you are trying to migrate to a newer technology right so this is what we say we provide a decoupled architecture and you can save 80% of your cost and time when migrating from one framework to another framework so now we can see what are the benefits of uber ui framework and saving your migrating cost is one of the feature that we provide and the next one is the core feature of uber ui framework so save your cost and time by 40% when you start an application and basically we have as as usual we have questions for you when we start a section so we have three important questions here can you start developing your application from 40% how can somebody start developing an application from 40% so what is that 40% that we are providing how will you decide on the right combination of tech stack for your project this is a very important question there are 3.5 million active repositories on javascript based projects on github today among them one is angular among them one is react and one is vuejs 3.5 million active repositories on javascript right so how will you make the right decision about technologies welcome to our starter kits as we as we said framework is just 20% of your application anybody who sees this image would clearly understand this is a package.json file where all the technologies that you use for the application are been registered in this file if you see only 20% of this belongs to react apart from that everything is an open source technology if i remove this react if i replace this with angular i don't see any challenges why the application will not run if it uses uber ui framework so we should not hold the framework higher than it actually should be there when we create an application when you go for proposals and this is what we ask them right can you develop this application on angular can you develop this application on react but there are a lot of underlying things where we are not aware of so let us talk about what is an application how do you define an application an application is a combination of technology and business right you have a business logic to implement that business logic you need technologies right i have an e-commerce website to implement that i need to use angular or react correct that is how a techno that is how an application is defined so 50% of the technology is almost an r&d effort like i mentioned 3.5 million active repositories out of that how would you how would you select the right kind of technologies because if you want to create an application whether it be react or angular it is not less than 30 different technologies has to work together including webpack including your transpilers your compilers your abstractions your libraries your ui controls your responsive web designs your css processes there are multiple different things and if you want to talk about unit testing there are tens of technologies that we are using there so almost 50% of that technology is an r&d effort the rest 50% is a business logic so at nows what we are promising is we will take care of that 50% so what do i really mean by that you have an application your application consists of components right 
and I want to create a logic only through components you can create a logic. For example, if it is a dashboard, only through graph as you see in this image, I can visualize what is the data available. Without components, you cannot create a website. Right? So the first point here is your starter kit has inbuilt components in it. So you don't have to reinvest your time in implementing those components. We have components starting from labels, input buttons, till complicated components like grids, data visualization components, data rendering components. We have everything done and kept ready inside the startup kit. And the next part of the starter kit is your Uber UI architecture, which gives you all the advantages that we have already discussed. And the third most important thing is the build framework. Okay. So when I show you a demo, you will understand how important is a build framework. The entire second demo that I'm going to show is based on this build framework. So this is what we promise. 50% of technology is where your application development starts. So if you work with Nows, if you sign up with Nows, if Nows develops your project, then from day one, you can start writing your business logics. You don't have to invest or reinvest your time in technology, in finding out what is the technology. So that is taken care by now. So we have startup kits varying from different technologies, React, Angular, Vue.js, Inferno.js. We have all these technologies ready. And from day one, you can start writing your business logic. This directly will save your cost and time by up to 40% is what we promise. So what really matters in application development? We have already discussed about JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and we have seen in depth about what is the role of a framework and how to architect an application, what are the problems that we are facing. But still, why I'm asking a question, what really matters in application development? And the following slides will give you a very deep, high-level knowledge into what is the core of an application. Are we talking about incorporating the following tech in application planning or proposals? Whenever we look out for a proposal from organizations, the important magic words that we're looking are at frameworks, right? Repeatedly Angular, or Vue.js, or those magic words is what we look at. It. But the following 10 slides will give you the latest technologies, which is very, very essential which is the real difference maker in an application. So what we have done is we have taken those cutting edge technologies and we have incorporated that as part of a startup kit. Okay, so let us see them. The first one is progressive web apps. This is a new concept. Gone are those days that we have to make multiple builds for Android, iOS and other stuff. In the next three to four years, if progressive web apps evolves, then you will have an application which can run like an app on your mobile browser. And you can have a shortcut for that on your screen. How cool it is. It is not an Android app. It is not an iOS app. An application that is running on your mobile browser can have a shortcut on your desktop screen and it will look exactly like an application and it will behave exactly like an application. Right, that's very cool. You have web components. So now we are not developing applications, right? We are creating components and assembling them. There will be a day, maybe a decade after, that website building will be like online shopping. I can go and download a login component. I can go and download a dashboard component. I can integrate that and there my website is ready. And that is the ambition of web components. Polymer. Google equally invests on Polymer as it does on Angular. All the websites that you see on Google is built on top of Polymer. For example, your Gmail is built on top of Polymer. Service workers. There is a case if there is no internet connection, I have to show a page which is not responsive, right? Which says that there is no internet connection or please check it. Not every information requires internet, correct? 
maybe only 40% of information of your web of your website requires internet so this is one aspect of service worker which will provide you offline capability and there are a lot of other cool stuffs that service worker does which will simply improve the performance of your application by 30% web web workers historically javascript has been blamed for single thread right you cannot multi process with it with the use of web workers you can introduce multi processing capabilities web app manifest so this has been a copy based functionality of a compiled language like c sharp and others as where you have these assemblies which contains all the information about an application so we have take so ui has taken that concept and this concept will really help when your application is loading on multiple different platforms like mobile and desktop or television or huge screens so you can get an information of what is the manifest what is the information and you can load your website based on top of that web assemblies where i can directly run mission code on my browser how cool it is web rtc this provides you with a real time communication if some of some of our clients are using this so you can really feel a difference shadow dom so this is one of the one of the latest technologies on a browser so we have taken this and incorporated all these things for you in our startup kits so this is the first demo that i would like to show to you so this demo will show you how you can interchange technology as i said the issue today is technology is evolving but your application is not evolving along with the technology so with the help of uber ui framework i'm going to demonstrate how we can make your application evolve along with technology see let us go to this menu here user profile you can see a simple chart which shows you the email statistics so let us understand and inspect here what technology is this chart built on so i have to just go to my elements here so if i see here my chart is built on high charts right so i want to upgrade to another technology typically what you do here you have to raise a change request pull your application down from production rebuild it retest it deploy it and then host it right there are so much of processes which is happening what if i tell you that without pulling your application down from production you can upgrade your technology is that possible let us see that so now this is built on top of high charts i want to use chart js so what we have done here you have to just replace the configuration chart here and that's it everything else is taken care by the framework by the uber ui framework now i go to the application i refresh my application here and now this chart is built on top of chart js so let us check here if you go here and clearly you can see canvas chart js uses canvas and the type of the chart is bar chart right one of the most important point to note here is we have not touched the source code the source code belongs here right my business layers my angular layers my dashboard everything is inside this without touching your source code without changing your html css and javascript files we have migrated your application to a newer technology and chart is a much easy configuration let us take a complex control let us go to employee info so this is a grid typically so grid is one of the most complex data representation available so let us see what technology this is built on top of if i see here this is built on ag grid wherever you see you can see this ag representation right i can take you here so this grid is built on top of ag grid now i have another new grid which gives me 5 seconds of loading speed we really cannot upgrade it right without going through the classic process which i have explained so now i want to use kento grid which gives me an advantage on top of ag grid I have to just change the technology here okay and 
then I'm going and the next time the user loads the application this particular grid will be built built on top of Kindle let us right click here and let us see this and you can clearly see here this is Kindle grid fine so this is what we promised when we demonstrated that we will keep your application along with technology technology is rapidly evolving we are promising that will keep your application evolving along with technology startup kit is the second demo that I want to show you whenever we want to create an application we tend to start it from the scratch it is not necessary to start from scratch every time once we have decided the technology, for example, in this case, I'm showing you an Angular startup kit. There may be a lot of applications that an organization decides to create on Angular platform. And every time we start from scratch, there is a minimum percentage in the community who develop applications with CLIs. One thumb rule that we always should remember is CLI is a black box. So CLI is not recommended for production applications. The reason that I say is this has become a fashion today that if you want to create an application, directly go to the technology website. If you're doing it in React, go to the React website and just follow the instructions how to create a CLI and start developing your applications. By default, you will have a development, production and testing environment. Everything will go smooth. But in the middle of your application, if some technology of some technology is not understood by your CLI for example when you're creating an application in the beginning you may have image decoders or image compressors and you may use a better technology which is in the span of the next five months after your application at the point of 60 percentage developed and there you want to use an additional technology and that technology will not be understood by the CLI and that will be a great problem and that's what my advice to every developer that I meet, to every project management team that I meet, never go for CLI because you're entering into a black box. So we have taken this very seriously here at NAUS. What we have done here is we have come up with our own Angular, React, Vue, and all the major framework startup kits. So this kit will give you not only development, production, and testing environment, it will give you a lot of additional factors which we will see in this demo so the first one I want to show you is your NPM start for development while you're using the kit if you want to use this for development purpose and that has been configured with a command which is called as NPM start I'm starting it from very basic so NPM start is typically what you have I've developed my application I want to see my output on the screen so this is purely for developers and we have not invented any technology here let me be very clear with that it is not what knows this framework that we are building on top of this platform we have done a great research and we have picked up all the best practices and we have implemented that best practices in this startup kit and that's what we have done so my application is hosted here on port number 3005 and I can see my output. So this NPM start is purely for developers. And the second feature of the startup kit is we may have multiple developers working across the globe. How to bring in consistency in code quality among the developers? Right? If we have 10 developers and two teams working across the globe for a single project, so how to bring in best practices and consistency of code quality across the project. So this is a serious problem, right? What we traditionally try to do is that we will have a review every week. So everybody has to bring up their code and we used to review manually. But manual process is not consistent, right? So how to automate this process? So there is something which is called as linting. So I want to show you that file. It is there inside this linting, tslint file. 
we have implemented more than 180 rules to follow best practices so i want to show you one of the one of the rule is there should not be if there is not default statement in switch then it would throw you an error if you are not declaring a variable in camel case it will throw you an error if you are not prefixing your interfaces it will throw you an error so these kind of 180 best practices and coding standards manually to transmit these things to the users to the developers and asking them to follow it there's always human error and a project always runs within time right within time and cost in this print I have to cover this much of stuffs so you be always compromise on quality every project starts with an ambition but at the end of the time we always rush to complete the project and quality takes the second stage right so we have understood this and we want to automate this process so if you give npm npm run lint and what this does is that it reads your code and it reads all the 180 best practices that we have implemented it compares those best practices with your code and if your code is not following that standard immediately it throws an error yet see now here the code is not following the standard so it immediately throws you an error we have went one step ahead and it will show you the file number it will show you the folder file and in which line that error has happened and you can export this as a document and you can email it suppose you're using automated process like Jenkins if you run this build npm run lint it will export that particular file where these lines show you the error and using Jenkins you can take and host this this will be great for the management team right if somebody wants to manage the project they can really come and see that particular URL and they can go and see that this particular line has not been followed these particular standards have not been followed how cool that would have been and the next feature that I want to demonstrate is documentation and how many of us are taking documentation very seriously and not every time a software company has the uh, chance of creating an application from scratch which is what everybody want to do and most of the time the application that we have is already developed application we have to enhance it or we, we have to maintain it and that is a very serious uh, task uh, it's a very complicated and a difficult task because we hardly have documentation only thing we'll have is KT sessions and practically everybody out here would have attended KT sessions and how much of knowledge transformation has happened in that KT session is a question right without documentation you can really not 100% understand the project and the developers are left to debug the application at the end of the day let's right? see so that is how we develop right we all have this experience right when I say this you can all relate to your experiences so documentation is one of the underdetermined um, stuffs that we have here so we really took this very seriously and once you take this once you start developing using a startup kit then documentation is taken care of so now if I give this command npm run compo doc okay compo doc and I also want to serve it so, it, so what this does so this is not 100% automated it is 90% automated there are certain kind of syntaxes that you have to give on top of your code for example if I go to the application here if I open my application here if I if I go to my layouts or my routes if I go to my routes if I go to my home page if I open my compo doc and this is the kind of syntaxes that you have to use okay only this is a manual effort if you use this this compo doc will automatically pick up these comments and it will create a website I want to minimize that so that I want you all to note that a folder will be automatically generated on the left hand side and that folder will contain the entire documentation of your application so that is not only created in terms of uh, notepads or documents it is an actual website that is created so people who have come on who have come from compiled environment like C sharp and Java this is already a well established practice but as far as UI is concerned this is a very new concept so we have tried a lot of documentations and finally we have come up with compo doc 
So this will not only document your application, it will also show you the architecture of your application and it will also show you what percentage of documentation has been covered in your application. Right, so now this is available in port number 3002. So let me open port number 3002, localhost port number 3002. See, and this is the website that has been created. And this gives you a hundred piece person detail about my application. So if I open my modules, I can clearly see this is my architecture which has been implemented. And I can zoom inside this and I can clearly see that these are the number of components that have been used. So this is the website that has been created. You can clearly see that this is a very low level, a very detailed website that has been generated here. You can actually see a complete detail of the application. You can see what is the architecture of the application and what are the number of components that we have created and what, are the, what is the relationship among them and what are the number of services which has been created. If I come here, it lists down my declarations, my providers, my imports, and what is the bootstrap component that I clearly have. If I want to navigate through this, you can directly click on this particular component. And this will take you to the details of that particular component, how cool it is. And if you want to see the source code, you can really see the source code which has been created here. And what is the template that I've used here? And how cool is this? And DOM tree is one of the most uh, sellable features that Angular has. And this clearly shows you and how you have created your DOM tree, right? And people are not taking HTML seriously. So best practices is confined to only JavaScript. It is not even confined to CSS and HTML. So this will clearly show you how your CSS has been structured. This has been structured very neatly and very cleanly. So this will give you a hierarchical level of your HTML template to a level where you can actually see documentation even for your variables. See, when we go to the home component here, okay, these are the properties that I've created. Price is one of the property that I've created. If I click on this price, it will take you to a drill down level of what is the documentation and why I have declared this variable. So here I can give the here I can give the explanation of why did I create this variable for. So to this granular level, your documentation can be done, and 90% of this effort is automated. And why we should not use this, right? And configuring this inside your startup kit is not an easy task. And we have spent a lot of time and a lot of research in doing this. So, and one good thing that we, I can talk about this documentation for a long time. I really want you to explore this. So for managers, you can clearly see that only 9% of my application is documented. Intentionally, I've left this like this. So based on one particular file, you can see that how much it has been documented. Suppose one guy is working on logging error handler and this is zero percent documented. You can clearly pick that guy and ask him to do your documentation for that. And this will be greatly helpful for even non-technical managers as well. So I want to finish up with this Angular documentation and I want to move on to CSS documentation. See, when we talk about CSS, Right, CSS is not taken seriously today, right? But your CSS files are growing as big as your JavaScript files today, right? I'm choosing an application, I'm choosing an app purely based on the experience that I have, right? In the next two years, CSS will overtake JavaScript and that is where we are moving forward. Now, but there is not even single architecture which is implemented on CSS today. We have a separate section, maybe we should plan for another webinar on CSS architecture that deserves a webinar. So your CSS files are so messed today. You don't have a single way that you can manage those CSS files. We are doing it with SAS, right? But I'm always a fan that the base should evolve rather than the abstraction. 
So we have also created documentation for CSS, which works in the same way like it works for Angular. So that is named the SAS doc. So npm run SAS doc. See, on the left hand side, you can see that a website will be generated. This is similar to Angular. So if I give that run doc, you can see a folder will be generated here. Okay, so that folder is SASTA. Let us navigate inside this folder. If I navigate inside this folder and let me host this website, HTTP server. If I host this website, so it's getting hosted on localhost 8080, right? Localhost 8080. And this is the documentation for your CSS. And this is very important. Suppose you are using a primary color. You can see these things have been declared in hundreds of places. There is no proper way that you can manage your CSS code. So if you can really document what you're trying to do with your design, there's nothing like that. And this will greatly improve consistency in your project. So we have taken that very seriously and we have implemented that here. And, and finally, somebody might ask, we have done all these things, right? I can directly go and do a build. Without following all these processes, you can do a build. So I also want to show about the build environment. The command for that is npm run build. So this might take some 30 seconds. In the meanwhile, I'll explain what is happening in this build. So this is my source file, right? So I have hundreds of files. When my application grows, I also may have thousands of files creating it. But my deployment code, my production code should be an optimized code. So we have taken more than 10 best practices, which is like compressing, reducing HTTP calls, bundling, chunking. So all these best practices and we have created a production environment. So your production environment will be only comprised of two or three files, your index.html file, your vendor files, and your application and your assets. When I open this, dist is the file that has been generated by npm build. If I use dist, and my entire application has been bundled into this code. My polyfills have been bundled inside this code. My vendor files have been bundled inside this code. So I can just take this distribution folder and, and I can deploy inside my server. And that's what I can do. Right? I don't have to manually go and take all my source code and clean up those codes and do all these things. I can just use my build here and my build will generate a distribution folder where all the best practices in this world has been implemented. I can just take that distribution folder and I can deploy that folder. Okay, that's a cool strategy, right? So, and one more stuff that I want to show you is we have implemented all these good things, right? And what if that I'm not able to test my code? Okay, testing is one of the most important factor and I would encourage all the projects that have been created now to write unit tests. So that environment also has been configured here. So the command for that is npm run unit test. So when I give this command, automatically it picks up all the unit tests that have written inside my code. It compiles and runs those unit tests. And we have also the report you can also export the report. So that report is also a website which using Jenkins, you can take that report and you can host it. So anybody at any given point of time can directly navigate to that URL and can see that how many tests have been succeeded and how many tests have been failed. So this comes here. So this clearly shows that executed one of one Right? I have only, this is a sample startup kit, so I have written only one test, and that test have been hosted here. So I want to show you that we have custom built it. So here is the file which is responsible for your development environment, dot prod is for the production environment, and dot test is for the test environment. So we have custom built it, so you can rest assured that you're not entering a black box. So finally, 
So we have implemented all the good practices, right? And somebody can directly go and skip all my linting and documentation, other thing. He can go and give a build, a distribution folder will be generated. He can directly go and do that, right? To avoid that, we have introduced something which is called as hard build. So your Q8 productions in your Jenkins or any automated deployment environment like Docker and other stuffs, the build is not the soft build, it is the hard build that we have configured. So what does this hard build do? Let me delete all these folders which has been generated. I'm deleting the distribution folder, the documentation folder, and the docs folder. I'm deleting this and every day the QA build which is going will be the hard build which is and finally we have come to the hard build what if if all the best practices have been implemented in your startup kit still people can go and skip your linting your unit testing your documentation process your design documentation process how are you going to enforce this that's a big question right still people can evade this so what we have done here is we have introduced something which is called as hard build so in the hard build, when you're configuring using Jenkins or Docker, whatever system that may use, the build which is going for your testing environment and for your production environment, it is not the normal build. It is the hard build. So hard build is what we configure in Jenkins as, as well as in Docker. So how hard build works is that first it runs your linting. Only if your linting passes, then it runs your unit tests. After your unit tests successfully passes, it runs your Angular documentation or React documentation. And if your documentation has been 100% completed, it runs your design documentation. And after your design documentation is completed, only then it runs your build process. In the sphere of these multiple builds, if your linting is failing, for example, there may be 50 developers working in your application. If one developer has failed to put a semicolon inside a statement, your entire Q8 build and production build will fail. And that seems to be much a hard line approach. But what I say is that quality is a hygiene you should have. It is not something of choice. From day one, if you are not following this process of having quality, having linter code, having tested code, having documented code, even if you cross 10% of your project, it becomes very difficult to catch up. So we at NOWS make it mandatory from day one, when you start using these kits, these kits will force you to follow the standard and quality. You cannot evade it to an extent where if multiple teams are working, even if 100 people are working inside a project, if one person has failed to create a camel case variable, your application will not go for testing. It will not be hosted on the testing environment. It cannot go for production. And that is how hardline approach that we have taken in NOWS. So we have come to the end of this presentation about the startup kits. So these startup kits are not only available for a particular technology, it is available for Angular, it is available for React, it is available for Vue. We have also started working on InfinoJS and other modern frameworks. So this is where we promise that when you come to NOS, you can start from 40% where the technology is 100% taken care of. I thank you all for being a part of this presentation. And now I open the next section for questions. Thank you all for joining us today. If you have any questions related to the Uber UI framework, you can reach out to us on our website. LinkedIn or on our Twitter handle and we can get in touch with you. I'm showing some of the coordinates for your reference. Looking forward for further interactions with you. Have a great day. Thank you.